Hi, everyone. I'm Rich Scheibner. And I'm Liz Chamberlain. We're co-editors of Inventio. We're serious about the how of digital media scholarship. In Inventio, authors interrogate how their digital scholarship came to be. And as Inventio editors, we invite you to participate in this series. Reach out to us anytime at the Kairos email listed below. We also plan to reach out to more authors as the series continues. Until then, thanks for watching. So why podcast started as an idea Hannah and I were batting around um, to put out a short kind of test case of what we're really promoting as scholarly podcasting. And so she had proposed I take a look at Kairos as a potential outlet because they are an amazing place doing some interesting work around open access, which was really important to us. So in the initial planning stages for our article, we first started brainstorming what we wanted the text to look like. Um, because it is a web-based text, we, we knew we wanted to write it as an article with the podcast uh, as the main text, but then also making sure that the transcription of each episode was up there as a text on the website um, and trying to keep it fairly minimal in its design so that people were encouraged to really be drawn into the audio and listening to the episodes rather than uh, getting caught up in how it looked or or solely focusing on reading the text itself. A lot of the research that went into this piece was over the past few years together. So we're the we're two of the three co-directors of the Amplify Podcast Network, which is a government circ funded government project um, thinking about what it means to be publishing sound scholarship. What is a scholarly podcast? So that was a culmination of years of research really going into this publication at that point as one of the main outputs for that project to kind of promote and use as an example to show people what uh, scholarly podcasting could look like in a journal setting. I'm fortunate Hannah and I have worked together for quite a few years and I actually used to work for her as a producer on one of her podcasts so i was actually quite used to writing in her voice already uh doing script writing for her on other projects um and vice versa she's read a lot of my research and has a good sense of my own voice as well and i think podcasting is a big strength to that um, in that you listen to the actual voice of the authors themselves and get a sense of how they speak uh, which helps in the writing process for both podcast related projects like this but also for or uh, scholarly research in general, we all have our own unique voices we bring to the page. I think that's one of the biggest um, barriers to collaboration is getting used to writing with other people's writing styles and voices for sure. Um, so finding people that you resonate with how they write and how they uh, propose their research is a big part of that collaborative ethos. Yeah, so with a piece like this, it is primarily scripted. So rather than it being a, I think there's often the presumption of podcasts being very immediate, you know, you have the conversation, you put it out on your feed the next day kind of scenario. Um, I also work in podcast production and sound design. So I uh, worked with Hannah, we figure, figured out what we wanted the music and theme song to sound like, for instance, which took some time deciding on that. Um, and composing some soundscapes and drawing on different files and sounds to evoke really what the possibilities were and are of podcasting that we're talking about in our work, right? How do you actually use sound and this form to your benefit to uh, really evoke the ideas in your work in ways that you can't necessarily do just with uh, written article text? Oh geez, there's always something, right? Um, <laughs> I think if anything, it would just be thinking about um, how we can 
invite people in a bit more. One of the main critiques I get a lot of our work here in any ways is that it's so polished people find it a bit overwhelming so despite we're talking about you know anyone can podcast and uh, it's a space that anyone can start to engage with here we've opted for a bit more of what is considered hi-fi podcasting using a term uh, one of my colleagues Mac Haygood uses quite a bit versus lo-fi or what uh, what we think of as more chat style scholarly podcasting work um, so maybe including and playing a bit more with those aesthetics, I would love to uh, include if I, you know, took that feedback today and applied it to what I was doing, what past me was working on. It would be playing around with those aesthetics a bit more and really acknowledging that not only in what we're speaking, but also in how I produce the work. So kind of maybe switching back and forth between a bit of lo-fi and hi-fi podcast production. Definitely. I think one of the main things I always talk about is my favorite thing that happened as a result of me doing a lot of podcasting and how it's translated and informed the way I write is that I find my academic writing has gotten much more succinct. Uh, it has gotten much more readable overall because trying to work and write within the podcast form to write a sound narrative that's meant to be read aloud really changes the way that you approach your research writing. So it it means that you have to write in a way that is more conversational. You have to write in a way that can be spoken aloud. So it makes you take the time to choose your language more carefully and make it uh, arguably more publicly accessible to a wide range of readers. Uh, it makes you define large words because you stumble over them and you're reminded that they're big words that not everyone will understand right away. I think that's one of the biggest takeaways I have from working in podcasting that really translates into my academic writing uh, outside of the form as well. Just a big thank you to our web text uh, designer as well. So Luisa Martinez Riano, because without her input and insight in creating that HTML, we would not have had this publication. <laughs> so I, I highly recommend, you know, think about what form you want your work to take and find the good people to do that with you.